Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing. And um, today I'm going to have a, a bit of an in-depth discussion about embroidering with metallic threads. And uh, in fact, only this morning I had another email from a customer having a few issues trying to work out why her machine was continually breaking metallic threads. And um, gee, there's lots of reasons for it. So my aim with this little video, and it, it, it might be a little on the long side, but I encourage you to watch it if you're gonna stitch with uh, metallic threads, is to explain why metallic threads break, what they're actually made of, and the things that you can do to mitigate against um, the, the problem that is, of course, metallic threads that break. And it can be really disheartening, particularly if you're halfway through a design or you've got a real a thing in mind and you just, it's just not working for you. So in order to do that, um, there's, there's a fair bit to explain. But what I'm gonna do while I go through this first little introduction, I'm going to um, have this machine in front of me. This is a Brother Stellaire. And I'm going to stitch out the word Hemingworth in gold metallic thread while I'm speaking to you. Uh, you won't be able to see the detail too much, and we'll show you that at the end. But I basically want to show you show you that you can stitch metallic threads as long as you do uh, everything you know correctly, and you and you solve those little problems that do exist. So hopefully the machine won't be too noisy. It won't go. It won't. Um, well, these aren't noisy machines, so it won't um, drown out my voice. And uh, while that's stitching, so I'm gonna hit the go button. Now I will point out that I'm using the Heming uh, Hemingworth Gold Metallic, and that is the light gold. I have got the thread in the cap, and I've got the cap on. And you notice I'm standing the machine upright because I can with the Hemingworth threads and the uh, cap system, and the thread will feed beautifully into the machine. So I've already started stitching the word Hemingworth, and we'll hit the go button and let that continue on. And, um, Hopefully that won't be too noisy. Now, metallic threads. Uh, essentially, metallic threads are exactly what they say. They're a metal film. So if you could imagine, generally speaking, a, um, a viscose or a polyester centered core of thread that is wrapped in a very fine, delicate metallic film. And, um, and that's exactly why it's called metallic, because it is a metallic film. Now imagine a metallic thread, it's much more um, aggressive and um, a bit more uh, raspy than a standard polyester or rayon thread. So you can imagine it pulling through the machine. Inherently, it is going to pull a bit tighter than a standard polyester thread or, or a rayon thread. So the, probably the number one thing you should do when you're stitching with a metallic thread is loosen your top tension. That is the needle tension. Now on this machine, I have just gone ahead and done that and I've taken the tension, the main tension on the machine down from four, which is the standard setting down to, uh, I think, 3.2. So I've taken quite a bit of tension off the top thread because the, me the me metallic thread does pull tighter. So you don't want as much, ten as much tension. You don't want to be dragging that thread through. So that's the first thing that I would always do. This machine here will also run right up to 1,050 stitches per minute. I don't want to run at that speed um, for metallic threads. I generally would slow down to around the 600 stitches per minute. And that's a really comfortable speed for a good quality metallic thread. So first of all, we talked about tension, back your needle tension off, reduce the machine speed. Let's talk about needles. A lot of conjecture there on needles. Should you use a metallic needle? Um, I hear people say they use metallic needles, top stitch needles, jeans needles. Personally speaking, I almost always use an embroidery needle for metallic threads. And I usually will start out trying with a uh, with an embroidery 7511. Now, the thing to understand is that an embroidery needle already has a slightly larger eye to accommodate embroidery thread and not so much the thread, but the, the, the multi-directional movement of a hoop. It has to allow that thread to travel freely through the needle eye. Metallics do need a bit more space in the needle eye. And so then a lot of people just instantly say, oh, well, I'll use a metallic needle. I've had terrible results with metallic needles. And the main reason for that is a metallic needle is a very elongated eye, so it's very tall. I find that it causes more problems than it solves. That's my personal opinion and my experience. But if you're using a metallic needle and it works for you, you keep doing that because that's the thing with embroidery. There's no absolute right or wrong. There's only the things that work. And they, that works for me using an embroidery needle. Usually a size 7511. If I've got a particularly difficult metallic thread, maybe a bit thicker or maybe a bit more wiry and just not quite as, as supple as say 
the soft light or our, our Hemingway thread, I might go to a size 90 needle, which is going to give you, by virtue of it being a bigger needle, a bigger eye. It does have the downside of punching a bigger hole, so it's not always the best option to use a bigger needle, but sometimes it will get you out of a pickle. So always have a pack of 90 needles. And I should point out, uh, in the TNC range, they have a, um, a fantastic pack of um, extra large eye needles. Now these are um, HX115STs. Now they're embroidery needles, size 90, but they're a bigger eye than the standard size 90. So uh, really where I've got a difficult thread, I might throw that at it and uh, that will sometimes help. So it's handy to have that one in your kit. I definitely would not recommend using a universal needle. Do not use a universal needle under any circumstances. The eye is too small. It will not work for you. So we've covered uh, backing your tension off, speed down to a, uh, about 600, sometimes less if you want. You can go down to 500, even 400. I avoid going right down to the lowest speed because I find that actually sometimes works against me. I like to have a good constant speed on the machine. So uh, tension, speed, needles. Obviously, um, another contributing factor for, to thread breaking for metallics is the quality of the design. So you've got to remember that metallic threads are generally used to embellish a design. In other words, they're to highlight the design. I would not use a metallic thread as a fill stitch on a dense, heavy design because what happens is the thread is already under stress due to it being a metallic thread. But if you've got a dense design that's tending to grab and, and, and grab that needle during the stitch formation, it puts more stress on the thread and it prevents the thread from forming the correct thread loops to form the stitch. If the thread loops aren't formed during the stitch formation correctly, you'll get missed stitches. And the minute you get some missed stitches on a metallic thread, you will shred the thread, I'll guarantee you. So generally use your metallic threads as a highlighting thread. A good use for metallics, and you'll see when I finish this text here, a good use for metallic threads is for lettering and monogramming and so on, where generally speaking, you're using a nice satin stitch. It's not a complex stitch to stitch. It's not too dense, looks really good. Um, or if you're doing satin stitch borders or some simple run, run stitch designs, um, metallics can be fantastic, but avoid using them as the predominant thread in a design where you're running the fill stitches and all the detail around those fills. It's just making your life a lot more difficult. So use metallics as a highlighting thread. So the next thing is, what about the quality of the thread, the thread itself? So, uh, gosh, it varies enormously. You know what, most of the metallic threads in the market are okay. And, um, you know, I'm using Hemingworth here. I also have the Soft Light brand, which is also very good. But, you know, whether you've got Madeira or Kingstar or any of these brands, they're, they're all good threads, you know. So you've just got to make sure you've set your machine to the optimum um, settings as we've just spoken about and uh, that should be your starting point so start with a good quality thread now this is almost finished so uh, once that's finished we'll dig in and have a look at it uh, but while we're talking about the quality of the threads let's talk about um, uh, how it's actually made so I mentioned at the start uh, generally speaking, a metallic thread will have a, um, a fibrous center or core, normally a viscose rayon or sometimes poly. And then the metallic film is wrapped very tightly around that core. And it has some of it can be really hard and wiry. Over the years, that thread, the technology has changed. And these days, metallic thread is a whole lot more um, a whole lot more supple, if you like, than it was, say, 10 or 15, 20 years ago. It was a bit wiry back then. Now we're on our last letter here, so look at that. And I haven't had a thread break, by the way, so <laughs> proves that it can be done. What I will, um, yeah, getting back to the thread quality. So um, it has got better over the years. So, so thread that's, too, that's very wiry and raspy is difficult to sew with. I'm gonna show you practically what that means in a minute. But a more soft, supple metallic thread is much easier to work with and uh, you'll see you'll see why in just a moment. So this is almost finished. So let's have a closer look at how this has actually stitched out. Okay, so we've just got the final satin stitch bar down here to stitch. And what I wanna do while I'm doing that is zoom in really close and show you one of the most important settings on a lot of machines, and that is the embroidery foot height, because it really does contribute to thread breakage and miss stitches if you don't get that set correctly. If I just pause that for a moment, and uh, 
This is what we call the presser foot there. And right now I've got the machine off, so it's not running. Um, and you can see there's quite a bit of distance. If I get my little stylus, I can point to that, that distance just there between the foot and the fabric. While the machine is not running, the foot is slightly lifted. When I start sewing again, I'm going to point this out. The presser foot height means that the, the height of that foot needs to be as close to the fabric as it can be without the fabric, uh, without touching the fabric or the stitching. If it's too high, you get what's called flagging. If the fabric is flagging up and down, the machine will not form the correct uh, needle thread loop to, cre to, to create the stitch. If it doesn't, you're likely going to miss stitches. Now, this is particularly difficult or bad on metallic threads because a metallic thread is already um, challenged to form a stitch loop. Uh, whereas if you, if you exasperate that by having an incorrect presser foot height, it's even worse. If you miss some stitches, thread loop doesn't form correctly, uh, you'll shred thread and um, it's a horrible experience and you don't want to do that. So we'll talk about that. Now on this machine, there is a setting on the screen for changing it. So if you have a brother machine with a what we call a static foot height, which this one is, and, um, and that, in other words, the foot doesn't go up and down with the needle, it's, it's set statically and you control the height of it. Uh, you should always eyeball this and check that it is close to, as close to the fabric as it can be without touching the fabric and it's, and it's not too high or too low. And um, if your machine, whatever brand you have, if it's a static foot, you most likely will have a presser foot height adjustment. If you have a machine that has got a, what we call a pogo foot or a foot that goes up and down with the needle, you won't have that setting. And uh, pretty much on your um, PR series machines, and you don't need to worry about that, your multi-needles. Um, some of the machines that have a pogo foot, eh, it can be a little bit dicey with metallic sometimes, but, but generally speaking, um, you know, these, these higher end brother machines are gonna be fantastic. So let's, let's start that stitching again. And again, we're looking at the fabric movement, and that's pretty good. That's set, I think, at one at the moment, one mil. But if that was too high, the fabric would be going up and down and with the needle, and that would be causing me grief. You will also get flagging of the fabric on dense designs. So if you're stitching running stitch metallic, a metallic thread using a running stitch over a densely constructed design, it will tend to want to grip the needle and the needle will drag the fabric up and down with it and that can also cause flagging. Other things that cause flagging is if your machine is on a table that's not stable and the machine's bouncing around a bit, the hoop will actually start to jump around and vibrate and that will also cause a similar effect to flagging. So you really need to avoid that, that thing we call flagging. It's one of the most common reasons for thread breakage. Now we do have another video on our website that um, will explain flagging and show you a lot more detail about it. So please take a look at that. So the machine is almost finished this stitching. Now when that's done, we'll grab that out. Now, again, I've been um, talking to you. This is stitched a design that took 11 minutes. There's not one thread break in there. It's a perfect result. So I'll just grab that out of the, out of the machine and let's have a look at it. We'll get camera guy to... Now there's a beautiful use of a metallic thread. So that's gold metallic. It looks sensational. And, um, but it's a very simple design. So you really only got satin stitches. There would have been some running stitches in the underlay, of course, but mostly it's a satin stitch design, good quality lettering, and um, it looks great. So that was using the Hemingworth Gold Metallic. Now, let's have a look at what else can cause thread shredding on metallic threads. First of all, we're going to have a look at the way the thread is delivered. So I'm gonna get camera guy to follow my little um, stylus here. As you can see, I've got the thread standing up here. Now the Hemingworth spool is quite unique because it has the plastic cap system. Now not all spools will have that plastic cap, but I can stand that upright, I can lay it down like this, I can put it down here. It wouldn't matter where I put that thread, the thread will deliver very well. The other thing though I'd like to point out, um, in fact, what I might do is I might change over to a darker color because that's gonna be much easier to see. So I have a spool of, another spool of Hemingworth. Now this is actually metallic thread, but it's blue. The reason I'm using blue is so you can see it on the white background. So first of all, let's cut this um, metallic thread. Now a, a really important tip guys is this, never pull thread back through the machine and particularly metallic threads. Um, and another little trick, if I trim that thread back at the, um, the spool there, and of course with the uh, Hemingworth, I just take my 
my cap and put it back in the top so that's not going to unravel or come loose anywhere so that's nicely stored if I was to pull this thread backwards through the machine now, there's a very strong possibility that I could get a bit of thread or fluff or lint or a uh, cut of thread caught in the tension mechanism in the machine. And that will cause you no end of grief. So don't do that. Lift the foot, cut the thread back at the spool and pull the thread through. If you have had a thread break and you've got no thread here to pull through, it's all gone back up into the machine, here's in fact, I might do it with the blue thread because you'll find it easier to see. So I'm just going to pull that gold thread through. There's the bit that I just cut off. I pulled it through the machine. I'm going to pop this blue thread on and I'm going to thread it the correct way. Hopefully my, my hands won't be in the way there. And we come down. Give it. I always give the thread a bit of a pull when I get there just to make sure it's in the tension correctly. And then into the machine. Now, let's just say I've had a thread break and my thread has sort of got caught back up in the machine somewhere and you've got nothing down here to pull, do not just pull the thread backwards. Even though you can't pull it forwards, don't do this. My advice is to unthread the machine backwards in the same fashion that you would have threaded it. So you would cut the thread and you just simply go through the process as if you're threading it but you're going back the other way and then come back and you'll eventually find that usually the thread will just pull out for you. Now I don't need to because it wasn't broken, but unthread it that way and you'll, you'll find that nine times out of 10, if you've had a thread break and the thread's caught up there, you'll be able to get it out easy. Okay, so let's get this blue thread back on there again. Thread the machine and we'll just hopefully, now you will find sometimes Whoops, let's just go okay to that. We'll thread that machine. Sometimes um, metallic threads can be a little bit fussy on needle threading as well. This one works fine, but don't be surprised if your automatic needle threader is challenged with metallic threads. One of the reasons for that is metallic threads, because of the, the nature of the thread itself, it's quite springy. It actually has a bit of a memory effect. Having been wound on that spool for so long, and you know, sometimes, hey, in fact, I found an old spool of it. <laughs> Echidna metallic thread that goes back 20 years. That's a 20 year old spool of metallic. And that thread has got a real a spring to it because it's been compressed for that long. It's like, you know, uncoiling a spring. Um, so that blue thread is on there and I'm actually just going to sit that down there and, and start stitching again, because I want to show you some things practically here. So I'm going to move that, um, go to layout, move, and I'm going to move that down a wee bit to there. And I'm going to start stitching in. Now, can you see that there's already a bit of a, a spirally effect on the thread? And that's normal. You even get that on polys and rayons. Metallics can be worse though. And we'll explain that in more detail. So let's just start stitching again. So this is a, a lovely blue metallic thread. So that's one of the advantages when you uh, can get nice different colored metallics. They can look sensational. And uh, the Hemingworth Metallics, I think there's 12 colours. In the soft light range, we have 52 shades of metallic thread, which is exceptional. Now, can you see how the thread is kicking off through here? It's, it's pretty good. I've got no issues with that at all. And, um, but here's what happens. If I stop this for a moment, this is feeding beautifully. If I was to pop this thread back down into the normal well that most people will use, just there like that, so the distance, if you're using the normal lay down threading system on most machines, the distance between the spool and where the thread enters the machine is only about that far. Now that means if the thread comes off the spool and gets a kink or a twist to it, um, it's very unlikely that that kink or that twist will disappear before it gets into the machine. And in a few moments, I'm going to practically show you what happens when you get a kink of thread go through the machine. Um, but Generally speaking, we like to give metallic threads a bit longer threading path. That's why I was I had the thread sitting up there. But if you don't have a um, metallic thread, for instance, uh, or a sorry, a Hemingworth metallic, you might want to use a thread stand and and have the thread vertically delivering this way. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but obviously, having the the cap on the Hemingworth system is really really cool. By the way, folks, if you're using a Hemingworth spool and you're laying it down in the well of the machine you do not use the lead off cap or the thread cap that goes over there. That's do not use that when you're using a Hemingworth spool with the clear cap and you're laying it down there, not needed. 
So I'm going to take that back, pop it back up there. I'm going to finish the letter H, then I'm going to change to a different thread. I'm going to practically show you what happens for so many people depending on the thread that you're using. Okay, so the letter H is finished. I've stopped it. I'm just going to do a trim with the thread there. Now I'm going to change over to that old spool of metallic that I have. And it, this is old. I can tell you, we were importing this 20 years ago. I was surprised I had it lying around, actually. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it was good in its day, but it had its challenges. And I'm going to explain that in detail. Now, remember what I said, don't pull the thread backwards, cut it. And again, with the Hemingworth spools, pop your little cap back in the top there. That stops it from unraveling. Pull the thread through the machine. And when you're doing this, Pull it gently, don't go like a bull at a gate, because if you feel something is caught and metallic threads are notorious for getting caught, um, you know, you wanna make sure you do it gently and don't get something caught in there. So um, a lot of people are now looking at this going, I don't wanna waste that bit of thread. Uh, my advice to you is get over it, um, because that little 0.001 cent of a thread, if you wind that back onto a spool, you'll take the twist out of it, you'll upset the quality of the thread and it won't necessarily work correctly when you go to start stitching next. Okay, so here we have this old spool of red. Now, it doesn't have a cap system, so I can't stand it up here. I also would not stand it on a twin needle spool pin because you don't want, if I just put that down here, hopefully camera guy can see this, you don't want to be turning the weight of the spool. So if we were using the twin needle spool pin here and say that was sitting up there like that, the last thing you need is the extra weight of the spool having to un unwind itself. That's just gonna cause you all sorts of grief. So you would be tempted to put it onto the, the, thread, the thread spool there. Now I can tell you right now, metallic has a mind of its own. And then you would need to put this little guy on, the little thread cap, and we'd push that on nice and firm. And then we would go ahead and thread it. Now this is a 20 year old metallic thread. And it's very springy. I can tell you it's got a real sort of rigidity to it. So let's see, that needle threader might be challenged. Oh no, it worked. Got it first time. So let's see what happens when we stitch this thread. We'll go foot down and we'll continue on. And it, um, it felt okay pulling through the machine. Maybe a little bit um, firmer to pull through than the, uh, the Hemingworth thread. But I don't know if camera guy can see this up here, but the thread tends to want to kick off the spool. Um, so far, so good. But what will happen is eventually, and I can pretty much guarantee you it'll happen, and I'm going to sort of force it to happen now, eventually what will happen is you'll get a twist like this. Um, so if that happens, and it will, uh, particularly when a thread's got more spring to it or it's older and it's just, you know, not as, as supple as it was, um, we're going to try, I'm going to be very quiet here and see if we can actually pick up this sound as that, because what will happen is that twist will get dragged into the machine and there are little devices up here called pretensioning devices that will try and get rid of that twist, but at that short distance there, it's almost entirely impossible to get rid of that twist and that twist will get caught into the tension mechanism because remember the tension mechanism is just two discs that are closed. And what happens is that twist can't get through there without either going very tight and potentially breaking thread um, or uh, going through and, and uh, if it doesn't break thread, it'll usually pull the stitch quite tight and you'll get a bit of bobbin thread pulled to the top and it'll be quite ugly and horrible. So it'll be very quiet. I'm not gonna talk as we continue on here. Let's see what we can hear. There it was. I don't know if that I don't know whether that picked up on the camera. We'll try. But we were pretty fortunate then. It got through, but I heard that little click as that twist got kind of dragged through the tension. Now, it sometimes it won't. It'll just get caught and it won't go through, and you'll have a um, you'll have a, a thread break or a shred. So we'll finish that letter E with that thread, and then we're going to move this thread. I'm going to show you another practical example of what those twists will actually do. Okay, so finish the letter E, let's just do a trim. 
and uh, probably didn't need to do a trim actually because what I'm going to do is show you what happens when the thread comes off vertically and uh, we'll take this thread away we'll take that out pop that back on there now this is a um, this is a thre independent thread stand that you can sit beside your machine and it's a good way to to deliver thread and we'll just pull that forward a bit more now what you've got to do when you use something like this, in fact, my thread has come out of the little guide there already. And look, there's a twist already developing here. Can you see all the twisting in this thread? And that's because that spool has been sitting compressed like a spring for the last 20 years. So it's got this memory effect to it now. I'm going to re-thread this machine. So I'm going to cut that thread there. I'm going to pull this thread through, take it out of the needle eye, pull that thread through and I'm going to thread this machine again. So let's go through the normal process. Now an interesting thing when we're pulling the thread in from the side here is the delivery guide, and most machines will have like a delivery sort of guides and, and eyelets and so on. I know that if I leave that thread sitting there, it's gonna come out of there. So I would probably take that up and hook it into this little guide up here. So the thread's coming from my spool all the way up across to there and now into the machine. But if I pull that thread through, can you see there's already a bit of a twist developing just here and that will already start to create a problem. And here's what's typically going to happen when you do this. That will jump off. Let's pull that through. Now my thread's got caught up here. It's actually wanting to kick out of there. That twist just here is now trying to come through. The thread's kicked off again around here. So you can see the challenges that we're faced with. Sometimes you've got to be a little bit creative when you're delivering um, uh, metallic threads. And what I want to do is I want to make sure the thread isn't kicking away over here. So I'm actually going to just drop that underneath the bobbin stop over here and see if that helps me. Now already there's a twist has come through. Look at that guy. That is not going to go through the machine. I'm going to pull that through slowly and see if we can hear the click that goes on, even though my tension is up. Let's listen. No, we managed to get it through without it getting caught. More luck than management, I can assure you. Okay, so now I've got my thread coming up to here, across under there, across to there, down to here. So you've probably heard people say, oh, I. I take my metallic thread and I put it as far away from the machine as I can and I run it up and over and, and, and everywhere. That's effectively what people are trying to do is help get rid of that twist. Um, years ago, we imported a product called a controller twist. We manufactured it ourselves and it was designed to prevent this problem. Unfortunately, we don't uh, make them anymore, but I'm gonna show you a bit of a cheats way to solve the problem. But this is a controller twist. So if you can see with this particular, this old spool of thread, how the thread is twisting so badly there, it twists, the most of the twisting comes from as it leaves the spool. So if I lift this little extendable spool pin up, watch what happens now. So can you see now, the thread is actually twisting around this extendable spool pin. And that helps prevent, we can set that to whatever height we want, that helps prevent the thread twisting on itself. Because once it gets a twist in it, it's really hard to get rid of. Now, some people will tell you to push the thread the thread through a little piece of foam or something. Um, you've got to remember, whenever you do that, it always adds a little bit more tension to the thread. So I found this was a really a classic way of preventing a thread, a thread twist. And that's working quite well. You can see there's far, left, far less twist in the thread coming up through there now. Now, I just created one there, but that's a, a, going to be a rarity. And let's see. Now also already it's kicked out of over here. So what I'm telling you here is this is an old spool with a really bad twist to it. So if you have old spools of metallic thread or you have thread that has really bad twisting, it's a challenge. Another little product we do have available and it will help sometimes is uh, this guy here. It's a uh, specialty threads, thread spool uh, pin adapter. That's the packaging that it comes with. And essentially you can sit that up on your bobbin winder or your twin needle spool pin and um, that will help you find a thread path. So for instance, the thread has come out up here. So I'm going to now take that in and uh, let me see and around there like that. And I can tell you right now that that delivery there is going to help me no end. 
So the thread's coming across, down and under there, and that will keep my thread from, from um, spooling or unraveling. Now, I have seen a lot of people try and do this with their metallic threads. If I take that off that uh, spool holder, I'll just move that way out of the way for a moment. The idea of this guy is that it, it allows you to put thread on a, on, on a horizontal way and using, using the weight of the spool, so we can put that thread there like that, and then we could get one of our little caps and we could actually pop that on there to hold that in place so as it can't fall off. And if I pull that thread through, I've got loads of thread going on there. I might, might actually pull that through again. We'll get rid of that. See how easy it is to get into a pickle with metallic thread? And already I have got myself into a pickle there. There we go. Let's just pull that. It's got a mind of its own sometimes, hasn't it? Okay, so the way this works is in theory, the thread will, will um, pull off the spool quite freely because it's just simply rotating on a bar like a barrel. But the problem is, is that you've also got to rotate the weight of the thread. Now, without having some little sort of like, almost like bearing devices to give this a nice fluid smooth movement, that weight of the thread turning is enough to cause the same problem. It won't be a twist that breaks the thread, it will be that extra pressure and, and um, force that's required to turn the spool while it's stitching and that'll give you in, un, un, inconsistent tensions and it will also cause thread break. So that particular way of doing it there, I don't like it unless you're using sort of the, um, the really sort of standard mini cops or mini cone, mini um, spools like this where there's not a lot of weight in the spool, that kind of works all right. Or you're, you've got another spool of thread that's right down to it, the very end of its life. So, you know, there's not a lot of weight in that. It's not going to take a lot of effort to turn. Um, it's a good idea if you do use it that way to peel away all the paper that's in the middle of the core because that does tend to um, get stuck and causes some grief as well. So anyway, that's not how I would deliver uh, that particular spool of thread to the machine. I would use one of these guys and if you don't have one of these guys, here's a quick fix on how to create your own. You might already have a a little stand like this where um, you've got your ability to put a thread on vertically. And uh, what I'm gonna do is actually take that spool off and show you how this works and what I did. I'm gonna pull that thread through the machine again so we don't get it caught. This little device here, we sell these, they're pretty much available everywhere. Um, tri triple needle uh, or triple thread spool holder. And all I've done is I've taken a, a normal straw and I've just very, very gently put an extension on the spindle. So without trying to put myself out of business and um, not have to produce any more of those uh, thread stands that we used to make, uh, this is a really simple fix. So you just pull that thread up through there and you'll find that the thread as I pull that is indeed wrapping around that straw and it's, it's preventing the thread from twisting on itself. So it's a great way to solve that, that particular problem. But nothing will beat um, discarding any old uh, thread that's become too springy, too much of a memory, or the oldest style metallic threads where they're very wiry and very gnarly. Nothing will beat moving up to a, you know, a good modern metallic thread that's, um, that's a bit more supple. So um, other things that could cause the, uh, the, the issues with thread is as thread ages, it will also dry out. Metallic threads do respond to a light coating of silicon spray, so you can always use the, um, the standard silicon spray, or we have the pump action spray as well. And when you're doing that, the way to, the way to do that is don't go overboard. Um, I'm just gonna use this little pump action spray here and give it a bit of a shake. And really just a, a couple of light coatings there like that. Let that sit for a while. That oil will flow into the, the silicon, uh, into the thread and it will lubricate it and certainly make it a wee bit nicer to stitch with. A bit more uh, lubrication on the thread is also is always very good. So that's also a great way to solve thread problems with, um, with metallics. And, uh, but most importantly, um, the twist is probably the big one. So you really wanna make sure that you've got good, good thread, that you're not getting too many twists in it. Um, your thread delivery is always good if you can pull the thread off vertically off the spool. Um, if you've got a machine that's got a twin needle spool stand at the back, stand it up there and uh, make sure your thread delivery is consistent. 
Um, watch for twist. It is the twist that's going to cause most of the breakage. Use an embroidery needle, size 75, 11, maybe a 90 if necessary, uh, or a size 90, 14. Um, make sure your presser foot height is correct. Back your tensions off a little bit. Um, slow your machine speed down. Use the appropriate stabilizer, good quality design, and avoid using metallics for every part of the design. That's not what they're meant to do. They're a highlighting thread. Use them for that, and you'll have hopefully no problems. Wow, that was pretty in-depth. We covered a lot. Um, Oh, and by the way, uh, if you can avoid it, don't use metallic thread in your bobbin because it's usually not necessary, but it does tend to leave deposits and all sorts of things in your bobbin case, and that will um, that will result in, uh, in a bit of grief for you. And the other thing I would point out is it is a metal film. So remember, it's quite aggressive, it's quite abrasive, and uh, it, it will wear your needle eye out a bit quicker. So you do need to change your needle a bit more frequently if you're doing a fair bit of metallic sewing. And um, just remember to, as always, clean your machine out and keep it, keep it uh, well maintained. That goes without saying. But I think that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, yeah, have fun with metallic threads. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us, uh, let us know. Get in touch with us and we'd be more than happy to help. Um, so for me now, yeah, cheers. <laughs>